Hi, I'm Heather, and today I want to talk about some basic tools and alternatives to the tools for doing your own book repair. I'll be listing a lot of resources for these down in the description below the video, too. The tool I use most often is a bone folder, and they're typically made of bone or plastic, horn, bamboo, many different materials, and they come in many different shapes. This is mine. This is my favorite one. It's actually made of bone. And the blunt end is good for burnishing. And I use this end most often for folding. It's a very handy tool. You, you can use your own fingernails for making really sharp folds. And you don't really need this for burnishing things but it's a very handy item. For folding and, and really pressing down nice sharp folds, don't use the letter opener. They can be really sharp and then they're gonna like cut and harm, you know, harm the paper. I also like to use a bunch of different micro spatulas. I use metal ones a lot in my job. I've done book repair at my job. I should also tell you I am not an expert by a long shot. I've just done a lot of book repair. I've learned a lot on the job. I've never, I have no academic certifications in book repair or preservation. I've taken workshops here and there. I've learned from people who are experts and I've learned as much as I can but I would love to be corrected and updated if anyone has better information. Should have said that at the beginning, but there we are. Micro spatulas. Um, at home, I use these. Uh, these are mostly used for lifting. Uh, these are actually for sculpting and clay. These are plastic but they work fine, bunch of different shapes. If you don't have these or you don't wanna buy anything special, you might have like a really thin spatula that's used for cake decorating. See what you have around the house. Brushes are good for applying adhesive and for cleaning. Keep these separate. Never, ever, ever mix your adhesive brushes and your cleaning brushes because however clean you think you are, you don't want to get dirt from your cleaning brushes into your adhesives. The, I have two brushes I use for adhesives. I use this one, this little one most often for applying adhesives. Some people like round brushes, some people like flat brushes, some people like little tiny paint brushes. It's all a matter of preference. If you're applying a lot of adhesive, like making your own book cloth, you're gonna want a big brush. This is what I use most often for little tiny bits in applying book repair. And then I use another one for tamping down adhered things. So this one's used pretty much dry. This one's used wet. These are my adhesive brushes. I also use skewers. You're going to be using these for when you're going to tear papers for book repair. You can use a knitting needle, um, but don't use a good one. Uh, if it's wooden or metal, are really pointy. When you're doing this, the point can be damaged. So uh, wooden skewers are fine. Um, metal skewers are fine. Metal skewers are a little bit more hardy. You can use a nail, like a, you know, a nail that you'd hammer. You could have one that you, they're kind of handy. An X-Acto knife is handy. 
a straight edge, a cutting mat. And again, you don't need a fancy cutting mat. If all you have is, is a piece of cardboard or something, that's fine. Cool. Uh, fancy, nice straight edges, a cork backed. Mm -hmm. Got this little one that's cork backed. But you're just going to want something that you can cut against with an X Acto knife. And a metal straight edge is good because you're not going to cut the metal. Um, a couple of small, wide mouth jars are handy for mixing up your adhesives. Um, I have this little one. It can be anything. Just look around the house for jars. Reuse jars is fine. Just make sure they're clean. Um, a plastic or even glass sheet is handy. Uh, plastic cutting board is fine. Something smooth works easier than something that's textured. A wooden cutting board will work fine. Just something flat. And if you don't have that, but you have, say, a nice flat piece of cardboard or a table, you can put some plastic on. It's fine. A spray bottle with water, that's going to be handy. Clean mm -hmm. cotton rags. You can use paper towels, but something you can reuse is nice. Uh, dividers are optional, but really handy for measuring. Um, I have these. You don't need them. You're going to be transferring measurements. You can take a piece of scratch paper and get the measurement and mark it, and that will be your measure. You don't actually need the dividers, but the dividers are handy. You're going to need pencils, small scissors, and these are going to be for trimming. So don't, for trimming paper, threads, cloth. So not your good fabric scissors, any scissors, but sharp. Um, if you want to get into sewing gatherings and working with thread, uh, book binders and needles are nice. They're kind of long and they're sharp, but again, they're not, they're not necessary. Uh, good practical larger size sewing needles are fine. You can also use an awl or your nail or something to poke holes and then use a blunter needle like a cross stitch needle but you want something with a fairly big eye um, if you get into sewing you're going to need book binders thread and it's linen and this is something that you do need you can't use cotton it it's not sturdy enough um, polyester threads and silk threads are not good because they're very thin and they can tear your paper. Bookbinder's thread is a really good thing to have. It, it's a little bit thicker. It's made of linen. You may be using it waxed. I use beeswax. And you can get beeswax at a hardware store. Uh, if it's a high quality beeswax candle, you can use stubs of that. Just make sure it's clean. And um, if you're vegan and you don't want to use beeswax, synthetic waxes can work. You just want something that kind of doesn't have a low melting point, so it's not going to get oily with the papers and is non-yellowing. Uh, so again, we were talking about poking holes and all is handy if you have it, but not required. Uh, wax paper will be handy to have, just basic wax paper. And if you have uh, baking paper or parchment paper, that's also non-stick, but it's generally not as porous. The wax paper is going to be used with scratch paper to go against the repair, and the wax paper allows scratch paper to absorb moisture away from the repairs. So just a basic wax paper that you get at the grocery store or hardware store, you don't need anything fancy. 
Uh, you're going to need waste paper, scratch paper, something not colored. You don't want the moisture against any dyes in the paper to migrate. So um, just office paper, office white paper that's going to go in their cycle bin, that's fine and good to use. I uh, generally don't want newspaper, again, because of the, the inks and colors that can migrate with the moisture. And you're going to need adhesives. Uh, I use methyl cellulose a lot. Uh, it, there's various brands. Um, got this at the art supply store. It's also, this is sort of a high quality methyl cellulose, but it's also commonly wallpaper paste. Uh, starch paste is another thing that's commonly used. You can make your own. There's various instructions out there for making starch paste from wheat flour, rice flour. You can even buy, usually at an art supply store or any place that has book repair supplies or book binding supplies, an instant wheat starch paste that's very high quality and mixes up really well. There are higher quality starch pastes that you cook, and those are used in conservation. Uh, I, for my purposes, here at home, I just generally use the methyl cellulose. It is has good adhesive properties. Starch paste is a little more adhesive, a little less flexible. As you get familiar with them, it's going to be a matter of personal preference. And as we get into the repairs, we can talk about pros and cons. Um, PVA is a synthetic adhesive. Yes, um, common brands of craft glues like Elmer's glue or PVA. Um, Elmer's glue is kind of thin. Uh, if you buy PVA like um, Jade 403 is a very good common brand of PVA adhesive. It's a little bit thicker and you can thin it down for what you'd like in your application. You can thin it with water or you can thin it with methyl cellulose. Um, glue sticks generally aren't an option that I like working with because although they stick really easily, it it's not a really long lasting adhesive and it kind of gets brittle and it can give way over time. Something that can be done too is mixing up like the methyl cellulose powder with alcohol for non-water-based repairs. Um, this is something I do do and I have done, but it's I'm not very experienced with it. I mostly deal with water-based repairs. Oh, something I should have also talked about at the beginning. Um, I, I do repairs with paper and cloth. I do not have a lot of experience with leather. So I'm mostly going to be getting into repairs with paper and cloth. A white plastic eraser is very handy, uh, generally for removing old adhesive. You want something that's not too hard, not too soft, kind of a medium white plastic eraser. Uh, tweezers are really handy. Something with pointy, pointy tips. Like these are ones I use. And you may want colored pencils or acrylic paints or even watercolors for coloring the papers that you might be using in your book repair totally optional. Um, I had this book that the spine was completely detached and I decided not to put it back on. So I just used paper to kind of construct a new spine for this. And I could have colored it to match, but I didn't. It's aesthetic. It's up to you. But we can get into doing some of that. And I'm talking about papers you'll be using. That's something that there's really no substitute. Um, 
the best paper, the paper I like for general book repair is Kozo paper, mulberry paper, and I got this at the art supply store that is mulberry hinging paper. And what this is is just a big long strip of it in this handy width. Various places that I'll list in the resources sell different sheets of paper, different sizes, um, and that's a whole separate topic. And I will either be getting into it a little bit or recommending other videos and other resources because other people know way more about the paper than I do and can introduce you to lots of different paper options. And then lastly, for learning book repair, I recommend getting a book that is something that, you know, is, is kind of a, like, if you can find something from the friends of the library or is being withdrawn or at a thrift store that's generally beat up and not worth a lot, then you can experiment with it and experiment on it and get to know it without any pressure. It's not a book that means a lot to you. I recommend something not too fat, not too big, not too heavy. And I'm going to be trying to work on repairing some of my books. Um, I want to fix the headband on this one. And at least fix the headband on this one. And I also want to make a kind of a notebook. But that's a whole other topic. Thanks. Bye.